shout it out. Guys. Thanks, Rick. All right, Wall Street capping a day of wild swings with a late rally that sent the Dow Jones Industrial Average 330 points higher, even with the rebound. This was the worst week for the markets in about two years. But that's not stopping the boom in the overall economy, with jobless claims under President Trump dropping to a 45-year low. So what do we make of all this? Joining us with his reaction, David bah Bonson, is that right? Yes. Um, is the founder of the Bonson Group, and he's also the author of an upcoming book called Crisis of Responsibility. Welcome to the show. So we've had a wild week in the stock market. We have some good news in the economy. What is the, What are the American people to make of all this volatility? You know, ironically, it's good news in the economy that kind of triggered this wild week in Wall Street because the wage growth was so good in the month of January, it sort of accelerated fears about maybe undesirable inflation coming sooner than people want it. So interest rates spiked higher, and then it just kind of caused a sort of chain reaction of things. At some point this week, it became irrational. Nothing was making any sense. It just, we, we were overdue for a correction, and then now this correction got overdone. And so to me, I think that you can't really put a lot into the way this particular week went. It had been a very long time since we've seen that kind of price movement. As things sort of resettle, the fundamentals are very, very good. Okay, so, David, that's why it happened. So what should investors going into this week do? Well, investors versus traders very likely shouldn't be doing anything. You can't try to trade either panic selling or panic buying in the midst of that kind of chaos. It was technically broken. The market wasn't functioning the way it normally would. So investors need to stay calm. They need to understand we've had 60 60 little panic movements since the financial crisis. And each time things sort of reset, sometimes two days later, like in Brexit. We dropped a thousand points after Brexit. We were up a thousand points a week later. Um, I think you have to kind of let those things okay. play out, hopefully stick to a good long, longer term plan. Okay, so we're seeing some new polling coming out from Quinnipiac saying uh, that voters are increasingly beginning to credit President Trump with the economy. We saw earlier on a lot of liberals saying, no, it's Obama. The good news is Obama's economy. Um, now voters are saying it's Trump economy. What do you think of that? So first and foremost, every president always gets too much credit when things are going well and too much blame <laughs> when they're going poorly. So I'll, I'll be as nonpartisan as I can there. But the fact of the matter is, this isn't up for debate. There is a deregulatory environment going on in corporate America that is highly stimulative to business. The CEO confidence, their willingness to put into business investment is something I haven't seen in a decade. And the reason is clearly that they don't feel that they're going to run into unnecessary headwinds. There is, uh, we call it personnel is policy. He has a personnel in his cabinet that is basically supportive mm -hmm. of overall economic growth. And I don't think that they felt that way in the yeah. prior administration. It's a big deal. Well, and 30 uh, percent, that's how much the uh, stock market has been up since President Trump took over. David Bonson, thank you very much. He's got a great thank new you. book, Crisis of Responsibility. It's fascinating. Tell us a little bit about our culture. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me.